Would you renew us and restore us according to your will and according to your grace? Oh, Lord, we need you. And we come before you to worship you and to tell you that we love you today. And we pray all this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Take a moment, even as we're socially distanced, and just maybe turn and greet one another. Wave at each other if you want to give an elbow bump uh, or just say hello from a distance. And um, greet each other in the name of Christ. Join me in our call to worship. Words taken from Psalm 139. The words will appear on the screen. Let us read responsibly and with passion. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You receive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out to my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know what I believe in you, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. Let us continue to praise our great God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord.
pray together. Father, how good it is to praise you today. And on this beautiful day, how could we not? For you are good and you are faithful. Lord, we needed the rain and you sent the rain. And we needed sunshine and you sent the sunshine. Lord, your mercies are new each and every day, every morning. And we just call upon you today as we gather together to worship you. We thank you, Lord, for the very breath that we breathe, for the life that you have given to us, that enables us to even be here today, that enables us to even praise you and worship you, to sing and to speak and to pray and to praise. So, Lord, would you come? Make us right with you. Make us right with each other. Would you forgive us from our sin? Would you cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Would you make us pure and radiant and pure in every way? May we worship you today with clean hands and a pure heart. And Lord, if there is anything that we have done or said in this past week, or even in this past hour, <laughs> Lord, would you just come and convict us, make us right with you, forgive us and cleanse us, Lord. Father, as we hear that siren, we just pray for those who may be in need right now. Somebody may be hurting, somebody may be struggling. Be with them and be with us as we worship you today. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Grant us your hope through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Could you anoint us all as we listen and hear what it is that you, by your Spirit, are saying to us today? So come, Lord Jesus, come. We pray and we ask it in your holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul penned these words in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. He said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. I want to know Christ, says the Apostle Paul. How many of you here today would like to know Christ? Would you like to know him more deeply? Would you like to see him more clearly? Would you like to know God and walk with him more intimately? How many would say yes to that? I assume that that's true of all of us, or you probably wouldn't be here today. But how many of you also know that growing deeply in God is a challenge? That this can be very hard, very difficult in today's world? How many would admit that sometimes it's difficult to grow deeper in Jesus Christ? Just a show of hands, probably most all of you. After all, we're human. We live in a broken and a fallen world. There are times where we not only feel distant from God, but it seems that God is far away. There are times where we are filled with anxiety and worry rather than peace and joy. There are times when we may wonder or even stray from God, and there are times where we may even rebel and run from God. But today's passage gives us hope and the key to unlocking a deep, intimate relationship with God. How many would be interested in that? Amen? Jesus says time and time again these words. Verse 4, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Say it with me. Remain in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a person remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Verse 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. What a promise. I brought with me this morning two branches. Uh, lovely, lovely branch. Isn't that great? Isn't that a beauty? Uh -huh. Isn't that beautiful? They can put it in a vase maybe, set it on your table or your living room. And then I have this one. This one here, green, nice. Well, it was green. I cut it this morning. It's already wilting a little bit. So I hate to say it, but the fate of this one is probably this one, right? So it's not going to last now that it's cut off. Which one would you rather be? Neither one, right? You don't want to be either one, eh? because they're, they're both cut off. But if you had to choose, you would probably say this one, the green one, right? This is what we want to be. We all want to bear fruit. And Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Which branch are you? Which branch do you want to be? Apart from our connection with Jesus, the plain and simple fact is we wither and we die. And there may be some of you here today who are withering. You may be going through the motions. You might look like the second one, the green one. But the reality is you are disconnected and way back when somewhere you, you made a decision and perhaps you are, or maybe it just drifted from God and, and there's no connection, there's no vital juice and you may be just dutifully fulfilling your job or your work or your volunteerism at church but truth be told, you are disconnected. And my hope and prayer for all of us and you today is that we will learn as a church to abide more deeply in God, especially in this season, more than ever before. 
And so today I want to invite you to grab your outline and grab a pen or pencil if you have one nearby and fill it in as we go because I want to share with you, first off, four barriers to abiding deeply with God. The, the, the NIV says, remain in me. The King James Version said, abide with me. I love that word, abide, to abide with. So four barriers to abiding deeply with God. And then secondly, I want to provide you with four boosters to abide with God. Things that we can do that will help increase your walk and intimacy with Jesus Christ. So number one, let's start with the four barriers today. And I just want to outline this and give you some straightforward teaching this morning. Number one, the first barrier is simply this, a lack of faith. Say it with me, a lack of faith. James 4 verse 2 says, you do not have because you do not ask God. When I first read that verse and came across it several years ago, I thought, is it really that easy? Is it really that simple that the reason that I may not have all that I want in my life right now is simply because I have failed to ask God. I have failed to, to pray and to ask God for it. And sometimes what happens is we fail to ask God for things because we can't even see it in our mind's eye. In other words, we don't even envision that life could be somehow different or better than what it is right now. In our spiritual life, too many have settled in for a kind of status quo spiritual walk with God, a status quo spirituality, or a kind of casual Christianity that is more shaped by the culture than by the Bible. And we say, well, I'm getting along okay. I really see no reason to change. I'm making it. We're gutting it out day in and day out. But we lose the energy and the life-giving power of Jesus, the sap and energy of Jesus flowing into us. But here's what Jesus said in John 10, 10. I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus didn't say, I have come that you may have life and have it halfway. Jesus did not say, I have come so that you can have life and enough to just sort of cope with things, to get through, to survive. No, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Say it with me, abundantly. Jesus has so much, God has so much that he wants to give you. And so friends, today I want to invite you to stir up your faith and to believe that your life, your spiritual walk, your relationship with God could be so much more because you see, there are more blessings to be had, there's more abundance to, to enjoy, there's more of God to know. God and His Word will take you as deep as you are willing to go. Don't settle for a status quo spirituality when there's so much more that can be had. So the first Buster, or the first barrier to um, abiding deeply is to simply, uh, it's that lack of faith, friends. So stir yourself up. Get yourself off center, off the couch maybe, into gear and moving deeper into the mysteries and wonders of God. The second barrier to abiding deeply with God is this, an attitude of self-sufficiency. In our culture, American culture especially, we love to pride ourselves on being self-sufficient and independent. It is a badge of honor for us not to ask for help. If we can do it ourselves, we will. And we justify it by saying, well, I don't want to bother or inconvenience other people with my problems or needs. It sounds great, but it's not good. We'd rather struggle through on our own and suffer than to ask for help. But this too is a barrier for abiding deeply with Jesus because the entire premise of the gospel is the fact that, yes, we need help. We need one another and we need, most importantly, God himself. It is only spiritual pride or arrogance or some sort of personal ambition to think, to think somehow that we can sort of get on without a deep and abiding relationship with Jesus. We are not self-sufficient. We need each other and we need God. 
A life with God is all about submission and surrender and coming to the end of yourself. To the point where you say, I just can't do this. Lord, I give up. I give in. I surrender to you. Would you come? Would you fill my life? Would you, would you quicken my spirit? Jesus said in John 15, verse 5, Apart from me, you can do nothing. He didn't say, apart from me, you can do some things. You can do a little bit. He said, you can do nothing. And there's a lot of people living their lives apart from God. Yeah, they're going to do something, but it's not that it's, it's going to last. Abiding deeply in Christ means surrendering to Jesus, not relying on your own self, your strength, your cleverness, your skills, your smarts, your, your work, your effort, or your will to get you through. And until you are fully surrendered, you will not abide deeply with Jesus. Number three, the third barrier to abiding deeply with God is simply this, busyness. Say it with me, busyness. It is one of the gods of our age, of our time. Let me give it to you straight. Being busy and having a deep walk with Jesus are antithetical. They are opposites. Busyness, the idol of our time, why, we wear it like a badge, because if we're busy, you must be important. But being busy militates against a deep and abiding relationship with God. Um, you simply cannot have both. And the Lord says through the psalmist in Psalm 46, verse 10, to simply be still and to know that I am God. When's the last time you were still with God? Jesus exemplified this in Mark chapter 3, verse 7. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, it says. I love that. It's kind of like Jesus is saying, hey, we're going to get out of town. Let's go to the lake this weekend. Let's have a little retreat, you know. Let's go to the cottage. Let's go to the cabin. Let's go fishing, you know. Um, Jesus is saying we need to pull away from all the busyness and the craziness. In Matthew chapter 14, after he had dismissed them, Jesus went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Friends, solitude, silence, and stillness are the keys to going deep with God. On a, on a paper that's printed, usually you'll find some margins, even on your outline. There's not a lot of margin, but there's a little margin here, a little margin all around it. In most papers, the office papers and so forth, even the newspaper, you've got a margin around that. Um, there's some white space around it. I want to submit to you this morning that you need some white space in your life. That so many lives are so jam-packed from morning, from the time that you get up in the morning till the time that you go to bed at night. There's just no space, no white space, no time for God, no time to refresh, no time to relax, no time to rest. And if that's the case, you're not going to have a deep and abiding relationship with God through Jesus. And then fourthly and finally, and this list is not exhausted, by the way, I'm sure there's others, but the fourth one that I want to mention this morning to you is simply this. The fourth barrier to deeply abiding with God is simply sin. Sin. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that you will not hear. Nothing damages and destroys your intimacy with God quite like sin and repeated sinful behavior. It's like oil and water. Sin and the water of the Holy Spirit, they do not mix. And after you indulge in that vice, you know it right away. You feel guilty and you feel distant from God. And you know that you have damaged your relationship with God, that you have not lived your life as purely and cleanly as God is calling you to. Amen. And it takes time to restore that relationship. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He doesn't come in and force his way in. It's like the trickle charger on your car battery. It takes time. You've got to plug it in and leave it sit overnight. It trickles and charges as the Holy Spirit gradually restores us. And it takes time and some days and maybe even weeks before we are restored. But we will be restored. 
And the question I have for you today is that, is there a sin in your life? What is your signature sin? We all have one. Is it pride? Is it some bad behavior or even an addiction? Because, friends, if you are living in sin, if you have habitual sin in your life, you're indulging your fleshly desires in an ungodly way, you will not be able to abide deeply with God. Plain and simple, you cannot have both. And if you feel distant from God, I invite you to just simply examine your life. Maybe there's something there that's getting in the way. Because sin will plug up and block and diminish and destroy the lifeline of God's spirit and living water flowing into you. It will block it. It will plug it up. So let's flip it around. More positively now, let's think of four boosters that will help us abide with God more deeply. Just briefly now, and the first three are sort of couplets. Um, the first one is this, believing and receiving. Just say it with me. Believing and receiving. In John chapter 1, verse 12, John writes, To all who received him, that is Jesus, to all who received Jesus, to those who believe in his name, he, God, gives the right to become children of God. Notice, believing, receiving. It all begins here. I'm going to assume nothing this morning about you and where you may be in your walk with Jesus. Because, friends, it begins by surrendering your heart to him, by believing that Jesus is, in fact, the Son of God and the Savior of the world, and, and receiving him into your heart and in your life. Because if you have not done that, you will have no intimacy with God. It begins by crossing the line of faith. Romans 10, verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What a promise. <sighs> Believing in Jesus, receiving him into your heart and life is the beginning of abiding deeply with Jesus. It is the beginning of your new relationship with Christ and it all begins there. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. This is where it all begins. How about you today? Where do you stand with God? Have you surrendered your heart and your life to Jesus? Because if you haven't, I invite you before the sun goes down today to take that step of faith, to fall on your knees and surrender and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I've been trying to live my life on my own. I'm trying to be self-sufficient. It's not working. Lord, I need you. Come into my life. Take control. I put you in the driver's seat. I put you as the leader of my life. And if you need help with that, see me after the service today or talk to one of our fellow members and we'll help you and we can pray with you. But it all begins by believing. Number two, the second booster is obedience. And I call it remaining and obeying. Say it with me. Remaining and obeying. Notice that time and time again in our passage, Jesus uses the expression, remain in me, eight times in seven verses. To remain implies that one is already in Christ. And we know that that's true. If you take that first step and you receive him into your heart and life, the Bible tells you, you are in Christ. You've been engrafted into Jesus. You're a part of the vine. 2 Corinthians 5.17 reminds us that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, a new creature. The old is gone, and the new has come. Now the question is, how do we remain in Christ? And yes, God, by His Spirit and His grace, is wafting you along and keeping you in, but that does not mean that there's nothing we must do. No, we can do some things that help us to connect, to remain, to abide with Jesus. Primarily, we obey His commands. John 15, verses 9 and 12, looking ahead a little bit. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, says Jesus. Now remain in my love if you obey my commands. You will remain in my love. And my command is this, he says later on, love each other as I have loved you. And it just all boils down to that, doesn't it? 
the greatest commandment. To love God and love others. When you do that, you're walking with Jesus. I love that great old hymn that we sometimes sing in the early service. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. obey. For to trust and obey, there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. obey. I feel it in my own life. When I walk closely with God, when I'm obedient to his word, when I seek to walk in purity, there's an intimacy there. There's a closeness. There's a presence. His spirit is there. You feel it too. You know what I'm talking about. And then when we go our own way or when I hang on to my sin, I become distant from God. And he removes the feeling of his presence, his spirit. That's why David would cry out in Psalm 51, Take not your Holy Spirit from me, Lord, because he knew that his sin posed the threat of the absence of God's spirit and presence. I think of Enoch and Noah who walked with God. I love that. I just want to walk with God. I love just a casual kind of expression. And here's what Jesus says in John 14, 21, just backing up a little bit. He said, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love him and show myself to him. Get that. I will show myself to him. What a promise. God is saying, Jesus is saying, when you walk with me in love, I will reveal myself to you. How many would like to see more of God? Wouldn't that be cool to see and know and feel his presence more and more in your life, in your heart? And God is saying, when you walk with me in love and you obey me, I will reveal more and more of myself to you. As we draw near to God, God draws near to us. Amen? Amen. Obedience to God's commands fosters a deep and abiding walk with Jesus. Thirdly, the third way to boost your abiding with God is by connecting or relating and connecting. Say it with me. Relating and connecting. How do you connect more deeply with Jesus? But one of the most important ways is to connect with his body on earth today. That is the church. The church of Jesus Christ. Paul says, now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. Ephesians 2.19 says, You are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. He's saying, look, for those of you who belong to Jesus Christ, you're already a part of God's household, His universal church. And now the task for each one of us is to live that out, to flesh it out, by belonging to a local body, a local church. Make it real. Make it clear to the world. I belong to Jesus. I'm a member of his church. In Matthew 18, verse 20, Jesus said, Where two or more are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. I love that. It points me to Sunday morning worship when we come together for worship. Yeah, I know some are not quite ready to come out in the virus and all of that, but it is so good to be together, even though we have to social distance, is it not? Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't you prefer this as to a virtual picture of me? Yeah. You know, not that, not that I don't look that good I'm like. I mean, this is where the Spirit of God can really move in a powerful way. It's when two or more, even two of us, come together in His name that Jesus, His Spirit, is in our midst and He, he revives because in the presence of God there is life and health and healing and wholeness and forgiveness and grace and love. If I miss a Sunday morning, I, I, I mean, if I'm on vacation and I, I miss, I mean, I, my whole week can be bad. So let me give it to you straight this morning, friends. 
If you have a habit of missing Sunday morning worship, you're just going to be out of step with God and His Spirit. If you are serving the church in some way, you volunteer, and uh, you continually miss Sunday morning worship, thinking, well, my service to the church, that's that what I do during the week, that's enough. That should be enough to satisfy God. Friends, you are on the road to burnout. If you're not coming back to the source, as we worship together corporately as the church of Jesus Christ, even if that's online, that's great. If you are neglecting the gathering of God's people on Sunday mornings, you are just going to be distant from God, plain and simple. Because this is the body of Christ on earth today, the church for which Jesus died, and he claims you, and he wants you to be present, to be a part of it, active, participant. Let me ask you this. Would anybody here ever consider doing surgery on yourself, cutting your, cutting your own gallbladder out? You do that? Would you, would you cut out, oh, I got a kidney stone. I think I'll just, you know, take care of that here. Maybe with some mirrors you could get that, you know. No, I mean, who would, who would do that? That'd be silly, right? In the same way, do not do radical surgery and cut yourself off from the body of Christ. You are a member of the body of Christ. You wouldn't cut your own arm off. Don't do it. Don't cut yourself off. Hebrews 10, 25 reminds us to not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but to let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. How many of you know that the day of Christ's return is approaching? Yeah. And doesn't it feel like it's closer now than ever before? Yeah. We need each other, friends. We need to encourage one another during this difficult time. And then fourthly, the fourth booster to abiding deeply with God is this, to slow down for loving union with God. Slowing down. Just say it with me. Slowing down. A wife once complained to her husband that he was always so busy and he was off working and he never really took time for her anymore. She said, you never tell me that you love me anymore. And he responded to her by saying, honey, I told you 25 years ago at the altar on our wedding day. And if it changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> nice guy, right? In the same way, God desires not just your lip service once in a while, but He wants you, and He wants to hear it frequently, of your love. Lord, I love you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we love you. Thank you for who you are. Just like the kids who complain, Dad's never home. He's always gone. He's working long hours, overtime, weekends. and They're distant from their father. Now flip it around. We're the ones who are always working and running around and never slowing down to take time for our heavenly father. It's the hardest thing to do because we live in a go, go, go culture. God says, slow down. Be still. Know that I am God. God wants you to spend time with him. Love is spelled T-I-M-E. It's one of the greatest joys of my relationship with God, uh, just to be able to hang out with God. It's one of the reasons I think I'm still single. I just, I love just being with God and taking a walk with God, riding my bike on the trail, swimming in the pool even, is a way of sort of communing with God for me. Sitting with his word, reading his Bible, uh, reading my Bible unhurriedly. Taking time to pray, to listen, to fall on my knees, and to pour out my heart to God, knowing that he hears me and he loves me as his precious child. You see, abiding deeply will never happen if we don't slow down for loving union with God and some of us today are burning the candle at both ends and we need to thin out that schedule. Find some white space and time for God. Take a Sabbath, whatever that looks like for you. So yes, today is Discipleship Sunday. 
And I want to submit to you today that it is a day for us to commit and recommit, to dedicate and rededicate our lives to God. That this one Sunday out of the year as we relaunch our discipleship ministries is a time for you today to say, this is a day from here on out, I am going to be more committed to the Lord Jesus Christ than I was yesterday. And tomorrow, I'll be more committed than I am today. That you are saying, I'm going to get off center, off the couch, that I'm going to move forward in my walk with the Lord, and by His grace, I'm going to follow the promptings of His Spirit, and I'm going to grow this season like never before. That's what today is all about. That's what God, I believe, is calling you to do today, to recommit to Him. And during this time of craziness and chaos in our society, it is my prayer for each one of you and for Grace Church that we would be a church that is so deeply abiding in Jesus that we will not be shaken by the events of this world. That we will be rooted squarely and deeply in the vine of Jesus, that we will let the Jesus juice flow into us and through us and out of us, that his love and his energy and his power would be that which motivates us and propels us and puts us in a mission. Because apart from him, we can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. How many of you want to be a fruit-producing Christian? Amen? Yeah. Yes. That's what we want. That's what Grace Church is about. That's our vision, that we will grow deeply in Jesus. In the midst of this crazy world, may you be so abiding so deeply with God that you will not be shaken. Let us pray. Father, we come before you today knowing that as we abide in you, that we can ask for whatever we want and your word tells us it will be done. As we lay our petitions before you and as they accord with your will, we know that you as a loving father are happy and eager to give good gifts to your children, including that of your very spirit in us. And so, Lord, today is a day of recommitment and rededication for Grace Church. Today is a day, O oh Lord, where we're going to let the past be the past where we're going to forgive and we're going to let bygones be bygones and we're going to move forward in your grace and your power and we're going to grow deeply. We're going to humble ourselves and submit to you and your word. We're going to put off sin and take on the clothes of righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, from this day forward, we commit to you and we ask for your help because we need it each and every day. We pray it in your holy name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Today is a special day. It is Discipleship Sunday, as I mentioned, a day to commission all of our teachers, leaders, helpers, anyone who is involved in any way, whether in the classroom or in a support staff type position, with our children's ministry, with our youth ministry, with our adult Bible studies or small groups. If you are involved or have been involved and anticipate being involved again, I'm going to invite you to come up to the platform right now. Take that insert, the bulletin insert uh, for your sermon notes. And uh, the flip side of it is a commissioning litany. And I'm going to invite all of you to turn to this litany because there's a part for each of you. So with all of our children's ministry leaders, with all of our youth leaders, with all of our Bible study teachers, all of our kitchen crew and support staff, please come up to the platform. I'll distance myself over here. On the flip side of the sermon notes, you'll see a litany. What a good looking bunch here. All right. Some of you may have to look on with each other. Can you do that? All right. You don't have the chrome device, do you? Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. We got more. Oh, Monique is going to help. Yep. Yeah. You were part of our kitchen crew. Anyone else? We don't want to leave anybody out here. All right. Those of you who are involved in leadership. What a good looking bunch, huh? What a good looking bunch this morning. So. On your insert, there's a part for me as pastor. I'll, I'll do that. How's that? 
I'll read that part. Uh, there's a part for teach, that's all of you before us here this morning. And there's a part that says com, C-O-N-G, that's short for congregation. And that's all of you. Okay, so you have a part to read as well. Let us proceed then with our litany of commission. As we begin a new season in discipleship ministries here at Grace Church, we are grateful for these individuals standing before us who have escaped, excuse me, escaped, who have, accepted, who have accepted the calling of God on their lives to serve as leaders, teachers, helpers, and role models for adults, youth, and children. We present ourselves not as perfect people, but as ones who have been clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ and all the glory to his we believe God will speak and act through you in our ministry together. We are grateful for your willingness to serve God, Grace Church, and our community. Servants of Jesus Christ, offering yourselves as leaders requires a degree of spiritual maturity on your part. How will you stay strong and vibrant in your ministry? We will trust in the Lord and not in our own understanding. We will pray. Then as servants of Christ, accept the service with which you have been entrusted. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Present yourselves to God as proved workers, ever faithful to the Spirit of God. And remember that apart from Jesus, you can do nothing. With the strength of God and by His grace, we want to accept the calling of God to serve in leadership. We receive you as servants of Christ. We pledge to support you in your service. We will encourage you with our prayers and faithful attendance, as well as with the participation of our children and community. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of all good gifts, we commend ourselves and our brothers and sisters to your constant love and guidance. Fill them with grace and love, and grant them the strength and peace of your spirit. Amen. By your mercies, O oh God, we dedicate ourselves this day to being and making mature, growing disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How about a big hand for these folks who are giving to the Thank you and praise God. You may be seated. What a good bunch here today. Welcome all who are visiting today. What a, what a privilege to have visitors here. We thank you and welcome you in. Many announcements in the bulletin. I urge you to read each and every one. As I mentioned to you, Fishnet and The Rock, our children and youth ministries, begin again this coming Wednesday. There's a kind of window of welcome from 5 to 5.15. The young people will meet over at the youth house. The children will meet here this week. And uh, the youth will have our own cookout and activities. The children will meet here at the church kind of like usual, uh, but we are looking forward to beginning this, this year a new season. Uh, we're going to social distance. We're going to ask everybody to wear a mask. Uh, bring a mask if you have one, and uh, we will social distance. We will be careful, but we also want to teach Jesus Christ and his love. Amen? Amen? That's what we're going to do this Wednesday, so we look forward to that. Um, the Discovery class, for those of you who might be considering membership, will begin the first Sunday in October, that is October 4. We will meet between the services informally in one of the adult Sunday school rooms. Oh, jumping back to the children and youth ministries, I almost forgot. Today is the last day to sign up to be a prayer partner in that ministry. We would love for you to be a prayer partner. There's a word about that in the bulletin. You can see what that involves, but you may sign up at the information station. Do that today before you leave, if that's what you want to do. And the second sign-up is for refreshments. We need people to volunteer to bring some goodies for desserts on Wednesday evenings. 
Nancy's going to start us off this Wednesday. That one's covered. But the weeks that coming after that, we need some help with that. So you may sign up for that also at the information station. And you may do that today. The Women of Joy Bible Study will meet again. We'll begin meeting this coming Saturday at 1 p.m. here at the church. Our consistory will meet tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. Next Sunday, I will begin a brand new sermon series on the Apostles' Creed. Taking apart the biblical truths behind the Apostles' Creed. Coming back to the very core and foundation of our faith in this time of chaos and craziness. And I just think it's going to be a real blessing to you and a blessing to me. And we're just going to take it apart next week, my introductory message to the Apostles' Creed. What is this historic creed? Where does it come from? Why was it written? How can it help us today? And so join us next Sunday and subsequent Sundays for that service. Um, I am kind of announcing this week that our office remodel is finally finished. Um, and yeah, how about a big game for that? We thank Karen Stowe for her generous donation for the church office. We thank Nancy and Rick Maycumber, along with Phyllis and Dan and Pat Foreman for, for donations toward the pastor's office, carpet, new lighting, so forth. Um, feel free to walk through, check it out. Uh, new paint, new carpet, all of those good things. New desk in the church office. Uh, really looks cool. And uh, so come and feel free to hang out there. There's just one thing that I regret so much about this remodel project. And I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but you know that first Sunday, about two months ago, we tore out all the carpet, the paneling, and everything else. And I thought afterwards, why didn't we save the pastor's carpet? It was so beautiful. <laughs> I had worn carpet underneath my chair and all of that, because if we had saved it, perhaps we could have cut it into pieces and maybe See, a few years ago, I got this. Do you know what this is? It's a part of the turf from the Unidome. When they replaced it, they put new turf down, they cut up the old turf in little squares, and they sold it. I think I paid $10 for this. It was a tremendous fundraiser. I thought, if we had only done that with a pastor's carpet, who would not want a piece of a pastor's carpet? Where inspiring sermons have been created, where my feet have trod, where, where God's spirit, I mean, wow, if we could only have done it over again, we could have made thousands of dollars. You could have each bought a piece of my old carpet, and it looked so beautiful, too, when it was tore up, I'm sure. So, anyway, yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Now, the office remodel looks great. Go check it out if you like after the service today. Walk through. As we turn our attention uh, to prayer, there are many announcements, many updates in the bulletin, which I invite you to read. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for your presence here, in this place, in this sanctuary. Even as many are away or many are at home watching online, we are glad that we could be here and that where two or more are gathered in your name, the promise that your spirit is in their midst, we claim it today. And we thank you for challenging us today through the scripture passage to abide more deeply with Jesus. It's what we all need. It's what we all long for. It's what we want to do and yet are so often distracted from doing. So Lord, be with us as we seek to grow on this Discipleship Sunday. Would you bless our Fishnet Children's Ministry and our Rock Youth Ministry and our Women of Joy Bible Study and our Discovery Class and, and our rededication of our hearts and lives to you today. Guide and lead us. Guide your consistory leaders tomorrow evening as we gather. Be with those of this congregation who need your help, who need your healing, who need your power, who need your grace. Many who are sick, many who are hurting, many who are grieving today or struggling, some who are shut in, some who are single and alone or lonely. We need you, Lord. We 
we need you and we need your healing to make us whole that we could do anything good for you in this world. Bless this community and our schools as students return. Keep them safe. Bless the Northeast Iowa Food Bank, Lord, as they seek to meet the needs of this community and beyond. Be with those today who are struggling and suffering from forest fires or the threat of a hurricane. Those who may have lost property already or even loved ones. Be with them. Bring healing and unity to this fractured nation. Bring a vaccine to the coronavirus. Bring your kingdom to earth as it is in heaven. And may your will be done in all things. So Lord, come. Refresh us and renew us and revive us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us then join together. The Spirit of Grace leads us in a closing song of affirmation. Let us stand as we sing.
Thank you again, Spirit of Grace. In Psalm 55, 22, the psalmist says this, Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.